Allie, we're back. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, Peter. It's good. We're awesome. here. Um, on you're the here. Episode. You're here too, yeah. maybe. It's you're, early. Well, you're alive. That's what I wanted to start off with. So, um, Allie's, for those who don't know, Allie's been jumping out of planes. And um, I only did a static line back in the day. So, slightly jealous here, but I, I have to kind of walk through your story just to kind of tell people from my perspective and obviously I would love for you to share your perspective on jumping out of a perfectly good airplane now at about 10,000 feet I believe and you're now packing your own chute but it wasn't always like that um, you posted a, uh, a flip video uh, on your socials um, at the beginning and, and I remember just kind of watching you go through your process of learning how to jump out of a plane, right? I wasn't there through the seven hours of classwork and all that, but I get to see the cool videos you post. But I also get to see your reactions and your responses of how you're talking about it. And um, I think it's it's interesting to watch because it's kind of, it's, it's a learning moment that I see in classrooms with anybody who's going through a learning piece where it's exciting it's like oh my gosh all right and then it starts to get really overwhelming and then you just kind of crash and then you're just like i don't know if i don't. the questions are flying around right and then now i mean it seems to be leveling out and and kind of like all right it's getting more and more uh, exciting um there were times uh not only on your social media uh posts but when we were talking that you're just like i don't really know what i'm doing here right Take us through that learning journey because I think there's a lot of parallels here of opportunities that we can actually pull out of not only your experience, but what students, teachers, educators, learners in general are going through every time they meet something new, a new challenge. Mm. So, yes, um, <laughs> my skydiving journey. So, again, hi, Ali Privet here, co hosting with you, Peter, on this awesome series we're doing of missed opportunities um, in education to connect learning to reality. So, I actually started this skydiving journey um, when I first started Tanamine and I fell in love with skydiving and the feeling of freedom that you have in free fall. And I am a definitely an adrenaline seeker, adventure seeker, <laughs> but I really was like, I wanna take this to the next level and do it solo because I just, in my mind, I was like, it has to be so much better than the tandem, right? But like getting to that point of enjoyment of the skydive has been such a whirlwind yeah. and there's so many learning things with that process that it's really brought me back to like what someone what a student may experience in a learner in a learning journey that could be really high stakes could be um really really intense and so yeah no it has been so when i first did the static line right you, you mentioned it was like a seven hour class it was mm -hmm. super intense and i was like hanging on every single word <laughs> because right like my life i literally felt like if i don't understand what this person is saying like i could die right <laughs> and, yeah but it's a high stakes student, test <laughs> it, exactly and it kind of made me i legitimately remember thinking like this is how some students may feel in a class they may they may treat it like if i don't get a certain grade whatever pressures they're putting on themselves or from outsiders or whatever the world is telling them like it it could really be um detrimental like i burned out like i mean mm -hmm. that whole day i just crashed after that whole day and so i did like my first jumps and i just remember thinking to myself like i did it but i don't know how much i enjoyed it it wasn't anything like the previous experience that i had had and um i was planning on going back like the next day and doing more jumps and my body was just absolutely <laughs> absolutely not gonna happen right. there was no way this was gonna happen and i just remember like you said i i was very open about my 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 feelings and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna enjoy this i'm gonna keep doing it i don't know if i'm gonna get to altitude um ten thousand feet by myself and like i was sitting on that that you know that dunning kruger um effect of like yeah. mount stupid and like i love skydiving it's gonna be so great and then doing it and being like i I don't know. This is so much. And it was so intense. And I questioned if I could do it. I questioned if I was going to like it. And 
it, I mean, it tr- it still scares me. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my heart beats out of my <laughs> chest every time, even though like I feel like I trust my equipment, and everything. But the thing is, is that I'm doing it to kind of really remind myself of what it's like to learn something and be wildly uncomfortable and work through that. So I'm definitely like, still in that journey, but there's so many rich lessons from it that if you're an adult or you're, you haven't been formally educated in something recently, like you're, you're beyond your formal educational experience. Like when are you in a situation in your adult life recently where you are totally in the learner's chair and there's so much trust there to get you through an experience. And I, like, that's part of why I'm doing this is to reinvigorate that because that's what students are going through. And, um, and it's okay to try something and, and not like it. I like it now, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, I didn't, I, I didn't, I really was like, I don't know this. I, I don't know mm-hmm. that I'm going to get my license. Like, I don't know that I'm going to enjoy this. Um, and I think that, we don't necessarily tell students like it's okay not to like something. Mm -hmm. I think there's a trick through like, where is it? And we talked about the, I love that you call it Mount stupid, which is hilarious. I I really actually haven't heard that before our conversation today, but Dunning, the Dunning Kruger effect. um, And if anybody doesn't know, look it up. It's, it's basically like you're, you're yes, we're going to do this. And then, you know, you get that despair. And then it starts to come back up or people don't come back from that despair. Sometimes that's, that's, that's a very interesting point. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there that is missed, especially in education is if you don't describe what is happening, students get lost in the the despair or learners in general, right? Like, um, we, we see the end result we're like, Oh, this is great. Whether it's jumping out of a plane, whether it's, you know, getting a perfect on a, a test, whether it's, whether it's completing a project that, that you're learning and you just love, whatever that is, right? And like where then is, the question is, where is the, I really don't like this, where does that happen? That's my question. And I don't, I don't know if we have an answer here, but like when you hit that valley of despair, do you, you trudge through, I would say trudge through, I don't know what that, it's like. Through, I jumped went, it went through. through. Yeah, right, yeah, you jumped through. Um, and, and then, you know, now it's starting to, okay, you had to put in the work and there's that work aspect at the bottom. Um, but that's interesting because I think that that's different for every student, right? Like, um, what does that, what does that not like area really look like? Um, Mm. and I think think yeah. There's two, there's two thoughts here that come to my mind. So when I'm going through this process, um, I'm really trying to relate it back to what learners um, feel. Mm -hmm. And I teach a particularly uh, tough subject or have taught like chemistry is, is just for, for me, one of the things I always try to do and, um, and educators can try and and do this is like, think, so you know where you want to get kids right in that end result this beautiful like you know end of the year or even you know third fourth quarter but you have to preview and set the stage for your learners and say like this part is really hard and and like we're going to work through it together i'm going to be there with you every step of the way and coach kids through that valley of despair so that they don't give up right we've all even like the school year has that that cyclical um process of you know the the honeymoon period in like august and september and then like the the deep dark hole that is october (laughs) and most of november and then you kind of crawl out of it for the rest of the year but uh, some kids don't recover from the valley of despair of learning. And that's where I think we really have to uh, be that partnership with kids through that and like get them through that. Because if we're, if we just drop kids and they just feel the excitement and then the drop with their learning experience and they never work through the hard, then we're not really, we're not teaching kids like the bigger picture lesson. Like you got to try something all the way through and then decide if you like it or not. Even if you're uncomfortable, even if it's hard, even if it makes your heart pound out of your chest every time, 
And I think there's a missed opportunity of letting things go too soon um, mm. with learning. So that's kind of where my head's going with like, it. Yeah, you, you're actually dropping students now, like out of the plane. That, that was, I'm going to go there because that was awesome. Um, but like, okay, so yes, what I, what I really like, what, I, what I'm hearing there is very interesting, especially on the educator side, like the system wide or, or whatever those opportunities are where you do see it. Right. Like you could easily and I know a lot of people who have easily just stuck with tandem jumping. You really don't have to do much. Right. I, I've never done it, so I don't want to like bad mouth it. It's, it's scary. You don't have and, to do yeah. a lot. But there are a few things, but most of the work is done by the instructor that is that is, you know, flying you, I guess, through the air and, and whatnot. But think about that in learning, right? Like it, it's very easy for systems to constantly tandem jump students through it. It's very difficult to get them to say, you know what, this time you're gonna do it by yourself. And but I'm going to be there with you. We'll have some sort of net down there or whatever it looks like, right? I'm visualizing jumping out of a plane the first time. But um, because I, that, I think, is where the learning is. However, there's been this pushback now, right? Like, I think there's this pushback in, in schools, in, in systems to where you're like, well, you know, we got to make it really good for the students. And I'm like, yes, and it's got to hurt. It's got to hurt a little bit. It really does, right? But we have to have the support to do that. So that's when I like I go back into those first days, the, the honeymoon period. But right before that honeymoon period, can you imagine what, what was the first part of that seven-hour class and you burnt yourself out? It's like when you see all the syllabi, right? Like you have five, seven syllabi in front of you when you're starting a new year whether you're in college high school master's degree whatever and you see everything i don't know if you saw that in the seven hour class or like here's the book and it looks like the bible and you're like whoa whoa wait what i gotta read this in order to survive so you know i think there's a lot of different interesting ways to to really let people know this is how you're feeling and i guess this goes into social emotional learning but and and it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be together. We're gonna tandem jump for a while, and then you're gonna go ahead and do it uh, by yourself. But that takes like um, building capacity, building the same thing over and over again. So you have a story a little bit about like you know when these things start to run in school, and then they just stop, and then. Can you imagine? Okay, so let me let me preface what you're about to say because I know the story. But if you're in a in a and I go back to skydiving, you're in this skydiving course and you're about halfway through and you're like, we're gonna go ahead and stop that, but you still gotta jump tomorrow. <laughs> like now you're like, what? I think that's what right. we're doing with learners, right? Mm, so there's so many so many places we can go with this. <laughs> but to your point of this, um, so from the the learner's perspective, right? So how basically how do you manage the overwhelm yeah. um, that is kind of from the the honeymoon stage or before the honeymoon stage to like the overwhelm and the burnout? And so there's really a, a missed opportunity here for educators, for kind of the educational system to create partnerships with students along that learner's journey. And in in there's there's some trust on both ends right so if we go to the skydiving example um so as a student i'm trusting the instructor that you're going to lead me to the ground safely everything you're teaching me like is designed to get me back on the ground and have this rich experience and like learn from it mm -hmm. but i'm gonna have to physically do some stuff along the way <laughs> like i'm gonna That's... have to be committed <laughs> To this learning journey. It's a, it's a little bit of a commitment, just, you know, a little to bit. save your now, life. <laughs> with the learning journey, right? Like you're trusting that the instructor, what they're teaching you, what they're bringing you through is for a bit, a better outcome, whatever the objective of the class course, et cetera, is. Okay. But um, in order to kind of avoid this syllabi overwhelm, right? Like how do you build capacity for students to take ownership of the learning process. Now, I'm 
in tandem with this. So if you're the educational institution in the high school, the college and whatnot, okay, there is an opportunity to build partnerships to bring the learning and connect it to the reality. So I'm going to use my example of uh, the high school I've most recently was at. We had a community liaison whose job it was, was to literally bring outside partnerships into the school building. Okay. And they've been doing that for about the past five years. And like, we've had these beautiful all school service days and these amazing like projects that people from the outside are like partnering with, with this, with this, with this garden and, and the groundskeeping just like to bring it to life. And it wasn't just people in the school, the, the staff. Okay. This person then retired. They've been building this capacity for years. And it's just now starting to, to feel like, oh, we can do more yeah. with with incorporating students' interests with the actual school setting. And they're eliminating the position. Right. So some things take time. And like even with skydiving, like you have to be okay with it taking time to build capacity and in, in order to feel good about something. And that's where I think the guiding of the educational experience, there's the, really this big gaping hole of, right? Like you're just, what you just said, like, oh, well, you're gonna get halfway through the training. You still have to jump and now we're dropping kids, like right. whole, not really out of planes, but we're yeah. really missing opportunities. We're juggling too much and they aren't feeling supported. They aren't reaching those end goals. They're being left in the valley of despair and they don't want to come back or they, they, they kind of do other things, but they weren't necessarily supported all the way through the journey to really get to that end goal clarity where they're connecting their learning really richly and deeply to their experiences because there isn't enough time there isn't enough capacity um and they can't see or feel getting out of that valley yeah I, you know it's, it's it is interesting because I've, I've seen it a lot right and i don't know why like i mean there's there could be a thousand reasons why that position was not refilled um I see the most in my my experiences is because somehow there's not data or a number hooked to it. Now I don't want to I don't want bad mouth data, right? Data is important. If something can be measured in numerics, we can improve it. Blah blah blah. I get it. But some things do we have to measure everything in data? Can we measure it like a happiness or or what students actually owning it and creating out of it? Um, I think that's one of the other challenges is when we see this Dunning-Kruger curve, like when we see this position open up, like somebody was like, oh, this is awesome. And then there's all this work you got to do. You have to connect with people. There's a lot of, you know, time frames and somebody's probably working 60 hours a week doing this, which is not unlike many educators. But you see the end goal over here and we never quite get to it. You know, we just start even the turn happens. Um, there's a lot of different meanings there, but what was interesting that something that you said in that story was, and that was originally what we were looking at is breaking down silos, like, right now we have different areas intertwining, like in different uh, academic areas and life areas intertwining with each other. And there seems to be sometimes a loss of control because the students and different things like that. But how do we get our students actually with somebody like that to continue to add into that syllabus and like just to create there's a lot there there's a lot there and the other thing is it's going to take time this isn't a a one school year fix yeah. and part and and it's not going to it's going to be messy and it's going to take time to build the capacity for these types of partnerships but to your point about data like right so my science background it's you know like data 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 but it really you can't put a a numerical value on the richness of somebody connecting something they learned in a classroom to their life and they're going to carry that with them forever and that's hard to put a numerical value on. And yet, so like we need to tell more stories with the learning journey and get kids to tell their journey, yeah. the before and after, and even the messy middle. So I think it's okay to, to kind of allow school to be a bit messier 
and but build capacity that does not overburden and ask teachers and staff to do more than they are already doing right um so that some type of position i think is 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 a that's a community connector or some kind of liaison that's designed to bring the school to life outside of this yeah. traditional school building there is a really really great starting point and it's not something that you can just be like one and done oh well we didn't get all the outcomes we wanted from this year well you don't even know what the outcomes are going to be because <laughs> so much more to it i yes i really like that because when when um when you're talking about that person what does it look like bringing in there's also an, I'm an educator and there's there's a learning curve that I've got to go through too. I think we have to be humble enough as, as educators to say, all right, well, I've got to give up some control of everything that I have to quote unquote teach. And, you know, I can't be on this very strict timeline all the time, blah, 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 which, you know, there are several different styles of, of educators and things like that. So there, there's that piece too, but we have to be patient with that as well. But you're right, that time frame building capacity isn't just like, look, you can get to the ground the fastest you want. It's You're not going to survive, but you can get there. You know what I'm saying? So mm. like you, you have to figure out, you have to go through the seven hours of training. You have to go through the, the highs and lows um, and then continue. And, and I'm guessing, and I don't know, I'm I'm guessing after you get certified, you, you have to re-up a certification after a year or two. I'm, I don't know. Oh, skydiving yeah. is a sport that you have to be current. Yeah. Um, depends on your license, but it's usually like you have to jump at least once every 30 to 60, 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Like it's not something you just get to do right. and then never do it again right <laughs> you yeah won't, right you won't, you won't just come back you're like all right i'm gonna try this after 50 years no like um but yeah there you you're already building capacity into that so there's a storyline you have a book right i i remember oh, i yes. got a book i only just did one static line i was like ooh, cool i'm gonna and then i never did but you have the the log book and everything like that um so how can we do that for educators we, we're great we have many many guests coming up on the podcast, uh, what different lens do we have? I mean, all across the board. We have some awesome guests. I cannot wait for this series to kind of now expand into what other perspectives there are. So we have um, higher education um, perspective. We have um, someone who is doing this type of work. They are partnering with school districts and they are, they are literally building this capacity and colleges, I think too. We have a parent perspective of how they are kind of shifting what the traditional school um, mindset and then post um, K through 12 education can look like. We have a student perspective and we're going to have an international perspective of what is it, what is building capacity or what, what, what are we missing even abroad or, or what can we learn from an international perspective as well of how schools are done differently there. And probably more, but that's what we have. <laughs> I know it's a pretty up. good start, I guess. You know, that'll get yes. us up in the plane and then we'll jump. Um, this is going to be a great series. I'm super excited. Um, it's wonderful. Share Thanks for sharing your, your, uh, your, your story of jumping to possible death. I don't know. That sounds, I'm trying to think in my script writing head, like, ooh, this, but it really is, right? Like, um, no, but uh, I felt it. It's yeah. been a whole journey. It will continue. Yeah. It's not, it's not over. Um, but it, yeah, it, it, your mind definitely goes to weird places when you are jumping <laughs> out of that plane. Uh, you, they need to follow you, my friend Allie. You gotta, you gotta get out there. We'll put that in the notes as well because you do uh, some great stuff all across your socials. We have some great guests coming up. Allie, thank you so much for uh, chatting today. We are going to be diving into some of these guests uh, coming up. You all want to listen in on this. Take notes. It doesn't matter where you are in your educational journey. Um, it's going to be an amazing, it is an amazing series already, um, but it's about to step up. I think we just went through the Valley of Despair and now we're we're moving up. Were we ever despaired? I don't think so, but you know. <laughs> but thanks, Allie, for hanging out with us. Thank you all. Um, we'll catch you next time on Disrupt Education. Bye.